Hey there. We are selling a property, man. So it's quite, it's quite interesting when it comes to the sale of this property. Because, again, I was having a conversation with Levo in terms of, you know, when you buy a property, there's so many attachments that, that, that you develop without you intentionally seeing them happen. Mm. So when, when it comes to now buying this property, it's either it's your first property or it might be your second property or it's your third property. There'll always be that thing whereby some people even name their properties um, with certain yeah. names. And now when it's time yeah. to let go, when no, you have to let go of Dolly. When when do you when do and the thing about property, you know with a human being it's easy to see to say that <coughs> it's easy to say that you know what I'm tired with this person. Is it easy? <coughs> it's hard. Okay, it's hard, but then for some people it's that thing of you know what, I've actually had it, it's enough. Yeah. But now with the property again is that thing whereby a property doesn't speak. Hmm. Now you have this 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 attachment to it. And now with a human being, I can sit down and I can say, because of one, two, three, four, I'm leaving this. Yeah. But now... Um, yeah. Yeah? When no, it, I'm just saying that, I'm agreeing with what you're saying, that whenever, mm. as a property investor or as a property buyer, man, mm. this doesn't only go for only property investors. Sometimes, even as a property buyer, whereby I just bought the property and I want to live in it. However, you're seeing that it doesn't really make sense financially. Number one, it could be that interest rates went so high that you are not able to afford to upkeep that property. Now, the hard part is someone coming to you and being like, uh, I think that you need to sell the property. Now, for a lot of people, it's more like, I, I can't sell my property because everybody knows that I'm living here. I can't sell my property because of the status that I have actually put upon myself. Now, we don't have to be, what's this, emotional about the buying understand that if you need to leave you need to leave as much as when you were renting at some point i'm hoping that you are renting or at some point i hope that you lived somewhere you understood that it's now time for me to leave this property now with the same thing even on this one understand that yes the circumstance might be different that now it's not nice that you are upgrading to a better house maybe you might be downgrading but now also understand that if you are downgrading at least you're getting more cash flow you're going to be getting more cash flow man but i would like to understand right yeah tell me from your side brother, that what your main point in terms of that informs you to leave that property to sell your property okay what what would be that 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 reason yeah so my my main reason of buying properties is Same. because of selling properties yeah. yeah i'm coming to that okay my, my main reason of buying properties is cash flow Okay. Right. So if the property is able to cash flow really good and I'm happy with that particular area, then I'm willing to buy that property. Okay. Now, the thing is, if my main reason for buying a property is the cash flow and now I'm not getting the cash flow, it just says that there's no reason for me to actually be owning this property at this moment. Yeah. So that's the main reason that I would actually be selling a property. If a, if a, flow, if a, if a, if a, a property is actually running cash flow mm. negative and it doesn't make business sense anymore, then it's time to press that eject button, man. Because mm. I know that the longer I hold this property, the more deals I'm actually losing out on, number one. Yeah. Number two, the, the more I'm actually putting myself in a situation whereby I'm compromised. Mm. Now, imagine if you are in this situation. You are at a point whereby you are making 2500 on a monthly basis from this property. Interest rates go up now you are not making any money interest rates still go up and now you're losing money on a monthly basis mm. now this 500 that you're having to put now to this property on a monthly basis it needs to come from somewhere and now if it's not your pocket then where else you need to sell the property but, but that would be my main reason for buying for selling the property but there was a lot of people i know that for sure because we are also in that situation but the thing about us is that we are not emotionally attached to that property. Mm. So for us, it's more of it's time to go. Yep. But now there's a lot of people that are in a situation whereby they know deep down that this is not making financial sense anymore. Mm. But now something somehow is telling them that let me hold on to this. Maybe over time things will get better. Mm. I know for sure that a lot of people are in that situation because someone has reached out to me and was like, Jens, my bond is really high so with this bond being really high i can't afford it anymore yeah and how can i so 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 again the thing about affordability is that when when you applied for this property when interest rates were at seven percent you could afford the property mm. you're paying let's say you're paying seven thousand 
because I can see this with our bond. I was paying 7,000, but now that the interest rates have gone up, I'm paying about 9,000. Mm. Now, what do you tell that person? Now, with, those, with that person, right, yeah. there are two variations of those type of people. They are one that just wants confirmation from your side yeah. to us, to know that I'm not crazy if I'm thinking this, right? Yeah. And then there's the other one that's emotionally attached to that property. You're 100% correct because from my side, right, when she was asking us, Chance, what do I do in this situation? Because it's really too much. I can't afford it anymore. I was like, but if you go back to the bank and renegotiate, let's say it was possible. Do you understand now that on the interest side, they're going to charge you way more? So let's just say somewhere, somehow you manage to convince them to move from 20 years to 30 years. Now, ultimately, your interest being charged is going to be way more mm -hmm. than it initially was. Mm -hmm. Or if you're going to be asking for a break, I saw we saw this during COVID. So there's also another client of ours that came through. During COVID, what happened is that there were these breaks. So, so some people took the breaks from paying. So what happened yeah. is that... If you guys did ask for the break, please put it on comments. Man. Yeah, or please join us, man. If you did take a break, we'd like to understand... Holiday, wasn't it called holiday? Whatever. <laughs> so what happened is that during that holiday, people were afforded a possibility of not paying bond for a certain number of time until things got back to normal. So now people came back and were like, you know what? I don't understand why did my bond actually go up or why did my interest go up to so much? So, so then the question was more of when you signed that holiday or that bond, didn't you understand the, the terms and conditions? Because we need to understand from the bank side, the bank is out there to make money and they're not wrong. I think our problem, not I think, man, our problem is that sometimes we're in situations that push us so much that I'd like out without even understanding the contract that I'm signing. Mm. So yes, I want out in terms of I don't want to be paying for the next six months, but then I'm not understanding the implications of me not paying for the next six months. You might find out that my interest rate will increase by 2%. Mm. So the, the person who was signing was only focused on not the holiday, the holiday for six months. They didn't and understand where we're going. Sure, uh, that's, that's a painful one. That, that's a really painful one that people need to start considering for every time when I'm signing, what does this really mean? Because now also look at it from a bank's perspective, right? Remember, guys, <coughs> at the end of the day, a bank is a business, right? A bank is not a, a, a institution. Hi, G. So, so G. <laughs> when you're looking at a bank, a bank is not <coughs> a, a institution that just gives out money for free, right? Yeah. A bank is a business. Yeah. Businesses, all businesses have targets. Right. And if I'm having a target, then I'm saying that I'm going to be giving you a break for the next six months. Mm. Remember, it's either I'm going to check up your, your monthly payments. So if you're paying 7,000, you need to actually recover that period when yeah. you weren't paying anything. So chances are I'm going to be increasing the period of you borrowing the money. So if it was 20 years, I'm going to be increasing it to 25 years. Yeah. Or I'm going to increase how much you're going to be paying me on a monthly basis. So if it was at 7,000, now I'm going to be moving it to 7,500 or even 8,000 because of that six months that I actually need to recover. If you haven't paid a bank, you'll know how much they'll call you on a daily basis that, hey, remember, you have to pay us, guys. You have to pay us. So remember, at the end of the day, a bank is a business. And if it is a business, it has targets that it has to meet. And with those targets, it's going to come back. So it's not like they're saying that, ah, six months is fine. You can uh, not, 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 not pay us anything. And thereafter, you can actually start paying us. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, guys, and what we're doing right now, which is quite interesting and emotional at the same time, is that we are doing a vlog of one of the properties that we're selling, right, that we owned, and it's time to let go. So again, we're always talking about removing emotions, and some people don't necessarily understand what do we mean when we're saying removing emotions. Mm. That's, that's so, a nice title, eh? It's time to let go. It's time to let go. It's going to be the book that you'll be writing. Yeah. <laughs> so ultimately, people know when to get in, or, or, or they, they know that, you know what, I'm really passionate about this, but they don't know when to let go. Mm. So that's what we're going through right now. It's a lot. It's, it's really a lot in terms of even at home, they're asking you, why are you selling the property? You know how difficult it is to explain to grandma that hey, the return, return on investment, investment doesn't make sense. So <laughs> how do you even start explaining return on investment to your grandmother? <laughs> so, so ultimately, and other people, even our same age group, they don't understand that concept in terms of when do I let go? 
because if i'm also to ask in terms of in, in the group right now Jorge, when is the right time to let go you'll find all different answers and some people can even give you an answer but when they're in that situation they won't let go they wouldn't they won't let go they wouldn't because it's hard to let go it's hard to let go now the moment you realize that it's hard to let go is if you don't afford that money on a monthly basis now if you're still getting paid on a monthly basis then it's still like oh, okay yes i want to let go but uh, let's see two years from now if it's going to work yeah. however once you lose your job and now it's starting to want money on a monthly basis that property starts to want money on a monthly basis trust me you're going to let it go as soon as possible man i mean you know this thing of letting go it's tough man and just understanding why am i saying that it's tough let's understand the most expensive part about letting go of a property it's that estate agent hey estate I agents do estate agents, they do a good job they do yeah. a good job you need to pay them bro. you do. need you need to pay them i mean you're looking at eight percent of the sale and it does happen this is what people don't know did you know that estate agents can make a commission whereby you didn't make any commission from selling your property mm. it happens so let's just say that let's play with numbers level let's say that uh, we're selling the property for one million right yeah so the estate agent comes through let's use easy numbers the estate agent comes through they say they want eight percent of one million yeah that's eighty thousand that's eighty thousand right yeah. and then now you find out that you are owing the bank nine hundred thousand so what's going to happen is that the eighty thousand is going to go to the estate agent company and then with how much did we say we're owing the bank you say 900,000, 900, yeah. Let's say 900,000 is going to the bank. And then you find out that your municipal bill, your rates and taxes was at 20,000. What does that mean? You didn't make nothing, man. <laughs> the agent made the money. 